Welcome everyone, Questini here with my review of The Last Train Home, developed by Ashbourne Games, published by THQ Nordic. And I have to say that from my perspective, this is one of the best games that THQ Nordic has released, well, rather published, in a decent while. I certainly don't like Jagged Alliance 3, and another title that I also played from them, even got a review copy from them, was The Valiant. But this particular title is is quite good. Now, they were, per their own words, Ashbourne, they were inspired by Commandos. It's not quite Commandos, but it certainly is a fantastic game to play either way. But what is the game about, you might ask? Well, it's the story of the Czechoslovak Legion. So during World War I, prisoners of war from Austria-Hungary, Czechs and Slovaks, mainly Czechs, got to point that out, were recruited under the Czechoslovak Legions in Russia, and not just Russia, also in France and other parts, but mainly in Russia. They were recruited to fight against Austria-Hungary with the promise of an independent Czechoslovakia. That was the promise that was made. Now, this is in the aftermath of World War I, where during the Russian Civil War, the Czechoslovak legions who are stuck in Russia are trying to go home by moving east. Now, it's complicated, and I think the game doesn't necessarily express every particular facet of history very well and how this ended up being. See, there's quite a few historical details that the game does explore, but there's also some things missing. Why are the legions trying to head east as opposed to west? Well, from a historical standpoint, here's what happened. Russia surrendered during World War I. After the communists took over, Lenin was forced to sign a very unfavorable peace agreement with the Germans. And since World War I was still being fought, and the Red Army, the Bolsheviks, did not want the Czechoslovak Legion on their territory, and the Germans and Austro-Hungarians wanted to get their hands on the Czechoslovak Legions, they were putting a lot of pressure on the Russians, on the Reds, to hand them over. They would have likely been executed in that case. So they couldn't just move west through German lines. So what they instead started doing originally as World War I was still ongoing, they started moving east. The original intent, get to Vladivostok, get on a ship, get to France. Then World War I ended, but the Russian Civil War kicked off full swing. And there were a bunch of disagreements between the Reds, the Whites, and of course the Czechoslovak uh, Legion about their situation. Effectively, no one in Russia wanted a very large and powerful military force made up of professional troops to be in their territory. Though I think the game does ex exaggerate to a certain degree how willing either the Red Army or the White Army were willing to fight the Legionaries. Truth be told, uh, they were more busy fighting each other than to deal with the Legion. That said, the Legion did capture Russia's gold reserves, did secure the railways in particular towards the east through white territory especially they did help solidify white control in the east and they did take fly vostok but it wasn't one train you have one train that's really representing the legion as a whole but the legion was going to the east in multiple trains in multiple waves and what the game does from a story standpoint is it's kind of reflecting many of the actions the Legion actually took, though not all of them, and there's some crucial omissions on the subject, but it's reflecting many of the actions the Legion did take during the Russian Civil War on this one train, when in reality it was many, many more units that were involved in all of this. How do I feel about it from a historical accuracy standpoint? Well, I do have to say that getting access to records as to exactly what happened. Like, we know the broad picture, that's been translated in English, but some of the details, like the question of, was the Legion really responsible for war crimes and what kind? Uh, how did they handle themselves? I find it very questionable to believe that the Legion was a very, 
let's just say, an honest force that never engaged in war crimes, which this game certainly portrays them as. Like, oh, they they never got blood on their hands. Um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna find that difficult uh, to believe. Train looks cool though. So from a story example, and they're omitting one of the crucial aspects because through this game you're going to get in conflict with both the Red Army and the White Army eventually. Though you kind of have an uneasy relationship with the Whites, and you do end up fighting the Reds from very early on. People have asked the question, like, is this game anti-Russian, pro-Russian? I wouldn't say it's anti-Russian or pro-Russian. I would say, if anything, it's anti-Bolshevik. Which, you know what? I'm perfectly fine with that. I think there's a lot of um, a lot of people who have a really bad impression about how horrible the Bolsheviks actually were during this time period. So this game is really making it clear that, yeah, the Bolsheviks were terrible. It does mention at points that the Bolsheviks did, did have the support, the genuine support of a large portion of Russia's population, which they did. The Bolsheviks, the Reds, did control Russia's heartland, so to speak. And not just like St. Petersburg and Moscow, no. A lot of territory, Russia's industrial heartland, they did control it. A lot of people in the big cities supported them, so on and so forth. That was the case. But they were also were fairly brutal. And this game does reflect that. The whites, well, the whites are not exactly portrayed in a, in a great fashion either, uh, to be quite honest. Which, to be fair, the whites were responsible for a bunch of their own um, horrible actions as well. The white terror did happen. A lot of war crimes were committed by the white army. Not quite as the, on the same level as the red army, let's be clear. There's no moral equivalence between the reds and the whites. The reds were far worse in every single way. And that's something maybe some people don't want to accept, but it's historical fact. Uh, what ended up uh, happening with regards uh, to that, the actions the Reds uh, took. Though sometimes I do certainly feel the game goes overboard, like there's a mission early on in the game where you uncover uh, some a set of documents and your captain, you're a major, you're playing a major in control of this train, your captain, Captain Langer, who is a historical figure who did participate in all of this, um, you did discover some documents and Langer is saying, oh, they're going to, uh, they were taking part in a special operation. Hmm, I wonder where the idea of the special operation came from. Yeah, that's, I'm sorry, that's just propaganda, like, uh, clearly. Now, I'm not trying to make it seem like, oh, the Reds were not terrible. They were, and there's no dispute on that. There's no justification for what ended up happening with respect to that, but at the same time, it does go overboard at some points, and it does try and portray the Legion in a very clean fashion. And while I couldn't find from what I searched, and I did search, like I did try and do it, I do spend a lot of time on social media trying to uncover the truth on geopolitics and history, while I did search and couldn't find anything, I find it difficult to believe, and keep in mind a lot of sources are not necessarily in English, a lot of history actually doesn't get translated in English. So when it comes to like things you might find on Google, Wiki, all that, um, just in general, a lot of things you might find are not are not necessarily going to be reflective of reality. There's a lot of things that don't get written about in English sources specifically. I didn't quite go down the rabbit hole of trying to use Google Translate to look in sources in Czech or Slovak or Russian about the Legion didn't quite go that, that far, but from what I could find in English sources, yeah, I couldn't quite find any accusations of war crimes. However, I could find accusations of treachery. Oh yes, there's a particular episode the Legion was involved in, because like in this game, the Whites will turn against you, but why do the Whites turn against you? Mm, maybe because they betrayed Kolchak. Now, to be fair, the Legionaries were one of the last people who turned against Kolchak, but the way they did, well, they're pretty much responsible for him being executed. So, for them to secure uh, their route home. So, not exactly covering themselves in glory, if you, if you might understand me on that particular uh, level. That's one thing. From a historical standpoint, there are obviously references to events that did happen. 
how the Legion may have played a role in the Tsar's execution, rather the Bolsheviks being afraid that the whites and um, legionnaires might get their hands on the Tsar, all that. The myth that the Tsar's children might have survived, that does play a role in the game as well. I do think the game is, for the most part, respectful of history, but it does have some fairly glaring omissions. And look, the legionnaires are going to be portrayed as the good guys, the Bolsheviks as the bad guys, and the whites as incompetent buffoons. That's not quite against history, but some key omissions. That's what I would describe it as. That's that's my perspective on that. Okay, enough about history, enough about the story. Well, the story is pretty simple. You start near Moscow, you have to make your way to Vladivostok to escape back home. How does that work from a gameplay standpoint? Well, you have a train. In this case, the train that I have at this particular point in the gameplay is probably the most optimal train you can get your hands on. It does have the starting locomotive. There's three locomotives in the game. I wish there were more types and there were reasons for those more types, but basically from an optimization standpoint, you don't need more than uh, the default locomotive, which you upgrade then to have an additional strength. So you can, so you can pull more cars, more additional cars including an artillery car. You do want artillery car, so I put it here at the, t uh, at the head of the train, so I have artillery in this particular case. A couple of shells. I only got there recently in this particular campaign I've been playing. Then I have four infantry cars in total, a hospital car, and a workshop car. The only thing I'm missing is the kitchen car. I personally found the kitchen car to be completely and utterly useless. I did try it out didn't see much use for it. Why is that? Well, the reason is the kitchen car, what it does is, uh, ignoring that for a second, is it gives you a bunch of consumables you can use like goulash and all that. But here's the thing, you can buy these from a store, you can buy these, and these are just gonna give you some temporary effects. They're gonna be useful to be sure, but I would rather have a train that's more optimal. Now, you could use another, um, locomotive that does have additional strength but the thing is that other locomotive the towing bull as it's called that can pull more and you do get the choice at one point in the game that i've already gone past but you do get a choice at one point to be able to replace your default locomotive with the towing bull or the third one the red one um you can replace it, but the thing is, you're going to go for a vast increase in terms of fuel consumption. And from my perspective, I would rather not consume more fuel. Fuel is life. Fuel is the most important. Like, this is the thing about the grandpa locomotive. It's the best because its fuel consumption is low. It can pull up to uh, eight cars, and that's all you really need. So you, you want four infantry cars. You want a workshop, you want a hospital car, mm -hmm. so that's going to be uh, six. Of course, the locomotive itself, um, oh, you want a, a storage car, so that's seven, and then an artillery car. That is it. You do not need anything more. The only thing you're going to miss is the storage car. Now, infantry cars just transport your infantry, uh, or in general, your, uh, your, your sol uh, soldiers. You have living spaces in them. What matters here is to get heating insulation and to also increase the standards of living since i don't have any for uh, anyone in the fourth living car in fact the third one is uh, not even full but i've got the fourth one just because well i know it's i'm gonna i know i'm gonna get to a point where i'm gonna have soldiers in that fourth car so i'm just picking up uh, already you do want to make your soldiers comfortable you need to bother with the heat that's another thing that does matter you're going to go for a Siberia in winter. And in order to deal with that, you need to improve the insulation on this thing. The way you do that is you can get improved insulation that will reduce, uh, that will increase the temperature by two. Um, but that's not going to be enough. The temperature will drop by four. So you're going to need, at the very least, for the worst portions, you're going to need the advanced stove. If you want to make it easier, you can also go for... Uh, the improved chimney that can help you out by advanced stove to deal with the temperature. If you don't keep the temperature in check, your guys are, are going to get ill. And the goal is to get everyone or as many people as possible to the finish line in Vladivostok. 
You can lose the campaign by having your crew morale drop um, basically to zero. That's your doom timer. So you really need to screw up uh, in a royal fashion to uh, to lose your crew morale. I managed to beat the game the first time around with a lo without losing anyone. It's difficult to lose people, at least on the campaign map. But you do have this journey on rail. And you have various objectives, various towns, various things that you can do on this map. A lake, shops. You can hunt for food. You're going to need to hunt for food. You're going to need fuel, which is generally gained through combat missions or through, uh, through finding it like in abandoned uh, location. So for instance, this is an abandoned village. You can search there, you can get food, you can get uh, other things. You can get fuel. But fuel in general, I find through combat missions. Never skip on a combat mission, you will regret it. Food can be hunted or fished, but really hunted. So you've got lakes and you've got uh, forests as well, where you can get food. Then money used to buy things at stores, guns, ammunition, etc. Wood you can get it for timberland. <laughs> That's a bit of a weird name. Metal can be acquired for missions through various locations. Cloth can be bought, and of course, a lot of these resources can be bought from stores. Uh, cloth can be found in abandoned villages or through missions. And then finally, herbs. Herbs are found in missions or bought from stores. You do, however, need someone that's going to have uh, the herbalist trait. And this is a, an important thing to understand. You've got squad members, but they're not just fighting combat. You don't just have them as riflemen, machine gunners, or medics, grenadiers, or scouts. No, they play a role on the campaign map. Now, unless you... Like, you will not have random encounters, like a situation where, oh, you send your squad out and they encounter a red patrol they have to fight. No, that doesn't happen, thankfully. Uh, but... Uh, when you engage in combat, you know you're sending your guys for com for a combat mission. But what you do care about are their various traits. So, Because you're going to have to keep them working on the train. You're going to need someone to run the train. You're going to need doctors to heal people on the train. You're going to need people in the workshop. You're going to need people to handle the artillery. Those are all the things. So you have to play this balancing act. Now, you can always take people from the train. Let's say the person who is running your hospital you can take them and attach them to a squad for a mission. So, for instance here, I have a mission that's coming up right here. So, let's see what's going to happen here. Okay. And we are going to get a mission and you'll you'll form a squad. You want to level up as many people. So, there I take the train driver, my machine gunners, People can have multiple roles, uh, but going to take my guys, assign them over here, and then go in the mission. Now, there's various traits. The important ones are things like survivalist, hunter to help you with food, uh, things like housekeeper, burglar. All of that is pretty important uh, to have in an actual squad. In fact, over here, one of the things I may do is actually remove her and take a burglar. The reason I want to take a burglar is there's some missions where you might encounter certain uh, certain objects that you can only pick up if someone has a particular trait like that. So that is going to be pretty useful uh, to have in that particular mission. Soldiers also have stamina, so the more you do various actions, the more tired they'll be, they'll need to recover. The comfort they have in the infantry cars does play a major role in that. Now, each soldier has a gun that they carry. You start with a bunch of basic guns, but you can get upgraded guns, upgraded machine guns, pistols, um, pistols, short rifles for your grenadiers, sniper rifles for your snipers. All of that stuff does matter. And then you also have ammo that you will have to bother with. So you can always take a look in your train inventory and see what ammo you have. Now keep in mind, when you do have a deployed squad, they're going to deploy with the ammunition, so it's not going to show up in your storage. 
but you can always look at a train inventory. Another thing that's also important to understand about this, you can dismantle various things for objects. So in this case of like ammo, you can dismantle it for gunpowder and metal. Gunpowder is used for certain things in the workshop car, which you won't start with. You will get these cars later on. So it can be used for various upgrades, for weapons, squad research, explosion research. In this case, I've got people in the workshop car making artillery ammo. Because, yeah, artillery is... Um, it starts with a limit of four. Uh, there's a limit of four. Um, uh, art, uh, four um, or or uh, a limit of three shells per mission. In this case, I only... I uh, have two shells, so maybe I just want to uh, wait a bit. And there you go. You have the third shell. Mission will be fought. But the way you want to play this is you want to keep your supplies up and not just enough to get past the current segment you're in, but also think about the segments you're going to have ahead. You want to build up a huge amount of fuel before you cross into Siberia. You want to have a good amount of food. You want to have a good amount of wood. You want to have a good amount of metal and cloth. And you want to upgrade the train. You want to build insulation. You want to build heating. You want to get winter clothing so that the soldiers that you have on deployment are protected. And you will get combat missions. You'll also have choices in which direction the train is going to go on. So for instance, over here, I had the choice over here at Penza to either go down the northern path, uh, path towards Kazan, Ekaterinburg, or the southern pa uh, path. But either way, you will end up in the same position. But there's also another fork over here further in the east in Siberia. The game will tell you some things about some of these choices. Other times, like with the choice at Penza, it, won't, it will just basically tell you, well, there's no reason why one choice is necessarily better than the other. But when you do have that choice deep in Siberia, that fork in the road, the game will explain uh, further details. Uh, suffice to say, the northern part is held by the whites, with whom you have a more uneasy relationship. Not necessarily completely hostile, but not friendly either. In the south, you do have the reds, who are very hostile. Um, though... With the whites, you do have various story decisions at points where you can build a better relationship with her, with them. And maybe that does play a role in the endgame. I'm not entirely certain about it. If it does matter. Or how much it matters over here. Okay, so we do have a mission. Now, each squad member does have a number of traits, uh, abilities that they can use in combat that you can customize. They will start with things like stabilize, so when a soldier is downed, when they lose HP, you can revive them, unless you deliberately disable that revival in the options menu. I personally don't care all that much about the combat missions. For me, what's fun about the game is not the missions themselves. For me, what's fun about the game is this journey you're on. The choices you have to make, the resource management, the train management, that's what's interesting to me. That's what I like. I do uh, think that the game should have focused more, should have one hand more voice acting, should have developed the characters you have in the train. Because it's not like you have random characters. No, they're all set characters. I wish there had been more voice acting. They would have developed those characters more if there is any particular criticism. Because you only have like four Someone voice actors, five voice actors in the entire game. The Reds who took over the nearby brewery. They poisoned the beer. Surprisingly, the Reds haven't touched it. I guess the Reds must know that it's poisoned. They are to get out for free to build support for the townspeople. We are here to prevent the loss of innocent lives due to this absurd situation. Since we can't exactly tell the Reds what happened, we must capture the brewery and destroy the entire supply of beer. Let's hope it's good. I wonder why you can't That's just choose position. the peaceful option. But okay, the missions will have various objectives. You oh, can shit. go with stealth, like you can actually probably play a lot of the missions with stealth, or you can go with the full combat approach. Sometimes you will be forced down a stealth approach. Understood. I am not fond when games do uh, do I'll something like there. that. Why is and yes, the reds are deeply hostile. I have it marked. Uh, 
Uh, the reds are these deeply hostile. We are going to end up moving. Enemy spotted. Okay, and just in this case, in my sights, you're taking cover. And we can do things like bayonet charges and clear them out in that particular sector. That's something that is available. Red, when you're in a mission moving. beyond the objectives, what I want to highlight is that one, I'll you don't want your soldiers move. to get injured because if they get injured Listen. in a mission, while you can heal them up yes, using medkits in individual mission, that will only apply for the mission themselves. I'm to right heal over. soldiers fully, As you, you do need to heal up, them up in the train itself. Now, the problem Understood. is you won't start the with the hospital car, Let's so the healing that. will be slow. They said. will heal passively. Wish. Um, especially with upgrades in the infantry me. cars, but it will be relatively so. So you want to play missions ideally yes, and take very little damage, or you want to get the hospital car as quickly as possible and I'll just look. Uh, go for blood for the blood gun, more or less. For my part, when Moving. it comes to the, uh, the combat missions, I just don't care about the stealth and aspect. I really do hate it. I really do dislike when do strategy games are trying oh, to enforce stealth on me. Because strategy on strategy games using stealth is Listening. never a good, never position. anything that works very, very well yes. from my point of view. I'll pry it open then. Finding cover. Let's hope it's good. And I'm guessing you that what's going to happen... Okay, uh, I'm let's... Here. I have it marked. Oh. Assuming position. How can I do that? Moving. All right. There's also the infamous alarm bells over there. Cover is pretty important, so your soldiers in heavy cover will yes. take very, very little damage. Found a key. Okay, so someone is yes. triggering al an alarm. I'm understood. I'm all ears. He's in my sights. Yes. Wise decision. Area clear. Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily Taking an alarm. Cover. Right, you are. Listening, sir. We want to be like. Uh, Loot goblin. Just pick up Red everything Red that's available on the yes. ground. Don't leave anything. Managing, sad. like, one of the reasons you may want to go for stealth Listen is not just wish. because, like, oh, you avoid co needless confrontation, but also because yes. um, ammo so management is a real oh, issue in this game, so actually oh, not using find. ammo no, and using stealth sad. instead Let's hope it's good. to... Uh, oof, someone is... Uh, Assuming position. Spotted. Yes. Let's I'll get that. Listen, taking cover. Enemy spotted. Ready as I'll ever be. Understood. So using stealth yes. to um, to avoid the, having to use ammo is pretty important. Yes. Like you don't just want your guys to spend a lot of time shooting at the enemy. Ready. You want to use special abilities like the, the critical shot that I've been using, things like that. Yes. Moving. Also, um, armored cars and tanks. Oh, yes, I'm we have tanks. Wish. Mark IV tanks, I believe. Mark III's, maybe. We will see. Because tanks and armored it. cars, well, they have all limited. Ready. You can't hide from me. Say the word, I'll get him. You do also have uh, explosives as a consumable. And yeah, explosive barrels, because why not? I'm here! Forward! Yes. Yeah, yes, sir! Though it is always hilarious when your when your riflemen can Understood. destroy tanks with just their rifles. Or the, your snipers are just gonna going, shoot at the tank possible. and somehow manage to destroy yes. it. That's a bit ridiculous. You can also call in artillery support, though. Shells, keep in mind, like, managing your resources on a campaign mm -hmm. is important. So, Assuming you always have to think about, like, when I'm going in a firefight in a mission, how much ammunition am I, am I going to pick up? With the brewery under our control, up? we can start destroying the beer supplies. Now, 
I'm certain this notion pains you all. But remember, the beer is poisoned. Therefore, we must ensure the entire supply is destroyed. Enemy spotted. I have him marked. <laughs> Captain Langer knows his soldiers. <laughs> That's uh like actually like when I got this mission before I got this particular mission, uh, let's see what's there. Like your soldiers can react to various events on the campaign map, like story, uh, like story decisions Ready. and all that. Gain, lose morale, so. gain of uh, Waters, negative sir. traits, all that kind of stuff. Find, oh, understood. I'm here. To the death. So let's just send the way. fellow with the bayonet. That must be the stash of valuables hidden okay. away by the brewery employees when the Reds took over. We must retrieve it. Hurry. And that would be about it in principle. It is a very interesting game I'm here. to uh -huh. actually play. It's a lot of fun, to be sure. It does work pretty well. You taking cover, sir? Taking position. All right. Well, he's as dead as a doornail. I hope the contents of that stash were worth his life. You don't have Not a problem, problem killing Understood. dozens of reds in other situations, so, uh, yeah, can what can find. I say? Cosine here, signing Let's out. Hope it's good. The yes. game was worth it. Found your repair kit. Um, yes. Certainly a lot of fun, it runs pretty well. There have yes. been some bugs and glitches and issues that I've encountered. As you wish. Yes. To the point that I had to re reload previous saves, Understood. and even then that might not have fixed Orders. the issue. Uh, there was a particular choice that just Losing. didn't work well for me with like Children of the Ready. Storm when I get to got to that point. Yes, so there are some game breaking bugs in that respect. But for the most what part, the game runs pretty well. Yes. Didn't get Ready. any crashes. I'll Don't keep in mind I do I'm have listening. a pretty powerful computer. Yes. So bear that in mind. Quasi signing out.